Okay, let's go. Hey everybody, welcome to Harlem. We are back. I'm going to be putting a little bit of lip balm on. We're gonna be meeting up with my friend Awet. I'm actually surprising him, I'm wearing his sweat suit collection. This is Bobbi Brown Skin Long Wear Weightless, and we are going to put a little bit of this on the top of my forehead. This is in color 6.75. As you know, me doing makeup to go meet up with my friends is like very chill, it's very relaxed, it's easy. Cause just in real life, I don't wear that much makeup if I'm honest with you. I wear a little bit, but I don't wear a lot. So if you catch me in the streets, this is what I would look like. See what I mean? It looks like skin. It's so nice. It's very, very light. I think one of the things that is really important is to remember whenever you do your makeup to always do it in really good light, like even light, because otherwise you end up maybe wearing a little bit more than you wanted to, or like maybe the color of the foundation is off. This is by Charlotte Tilbury. It's this really cool bronzer and it's in the color four. It's quite deep, so I just take a little bit of it and just start on the edge of my face. We're gonna do a lip today, which I'm really excited about. Lately I have not been doing as much bold lips and I really do like a bold lip. This is the Revlon Color Stay Skin Awaken Concealer. I love using my hands for makeup. I think that it's like one of the best ways to get everything to look super seamless, especially if you don't feel like you need a lot of coverage. You remember when like Alicia Keys wasn't wearing as much makeup and everybody was like, why is she not wearing any makeup? And then like, I remember when she had like a lot of skin things going on, right? And then her skin got really clear and she was like, I'm not gonna wear as much makeup. And I was like, I feel you, <laughs> I get it. So that might be also the season that I'm in. I've had a lot of acne and I feel like it's finally in a place where it's not as intense anymore. I can kind of like do my makeup and not feel like I need to wear a ton of coverage. And I just wanna like really lean into that because for a long time I actually really, I think I hid behind my makeup a little bit. Like I would wear makeup everywhere I went and everywhere, whenever I went out because I always wanted to make sure that my skin looked even. I mean, I think it's all about like honoring where you're at and what you're feeling. I think leaning into how you're feeling is really, really important. I'm gonna take a Benefit brow pencil and I'm gonna comb these babies up and I'm going to fill in the eyebrow, a little bit here in the front and then at the end. I'm making my eyebrows look even again because I went to a random person to get my eyebrows done. I don't know why I did that. Okay, we're gonna add a little bit of brow product. This is Makeup Forever's Brow Fixer. I've been doing um, brow lamination, so it's basically a perm for your eyebrows. It like straightens your eyebrow hair up. But what happens is that whenever you do it, your brow hair becomes like super, super flimsy. So I have found that now I'm using a lot more of a brow gel. We're gonna do a little bit of eyeliner and I'm going to take this long comb liner and we are just gonna apply it here. Oh, I'm gonna show you this new trick that I've been doing. I take the pencil and I give myself a little bit more of an edge here. See that? Like it kind of like makes the eye look a little bit more defined, which I like. I don't bring it all the way in so you don't have to worry about going underneath where you normally have hair. Yeah, I'm kind of obsessed with this. I've been doing this a lot. And then I'm gonna take the liner here and I'm just gonna add a little wing. Fill in the eyeliner. It looks so cool, right? It's like a little like, it's a little edgy. I have a lot of friends that are in Brooklyn and Harlem is like all the way uptown. And so it's kind of tough sometimes whenever you want to meet up with people because I actually really love my neighborhood a lot. So I like to hang out here. So I always try to invite people. So sometimes, you know, you can have friends in New York and it's like, you could not see them like a lot, to be honest with you. But I think that one of the things I'm loving so much about doing this with you is that like we get to hang out but then you get to also like meet a friend of mine and we also get to go to certain places that i love or places that i've been wanting to check out so i'm just so excited i'm very excited about today this is by revlon this is the so fierce it's by this company called ket cosmetics and it's their translucent powder i'm going to show you something really quick this is the reason why i like this check this out you just put a little bit of this powder on and it's like all the shine is gone you know, a lot of the newer powders on the market are not really designed to like take away that much shine. This is called the Matte Light Crayon. All right, I'm gonna take Sky High and we're gonna put her in the middle. Mm -hmm. Come on, bold lip. I like this. I think we're ready. This is the look. We're finished. This is this is my version of basic. <laughs> okay, maybe it's a lot, <laughs> but we're gonna go. We're gonna go meet my friend Owet. 
I hope you get surprised by this sweater. I hope you get surprised that I'm wearing. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, let's go. What's up? How are you? So nice to oh, see you. So Thanks fun. for pulling up. You've been here before. I've right? been here. Yeah. This is one of my favorite places. Alright. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I had to surprise you. Well, you already saw the bottom, so you already knew. Uh, <laughs> I had to wear I, had to wear I love it. That's why you seem so like... comfortable. I thought maybe, I was like, we should actually chill right now. Because you're wearing outfits. Yeah. It. That's it. That's you got it's victory so all over you. I love it. Yeah. Okay. So, they have the vegan bowls, they have the chicken bowls, soya super bowls. Amazing, by the way. Yeah. So, you really can't go wrong. This is the one that you normally get? Yeah. I okay. get the soya grilled steak or chicken. Okay. Um, they do drinks here, too, right? Yes. Okay. The mascal margarita, incredible. Good. Like, you've got to try that. I think I'm going to do this jollof rice. Love I it. love jollof yeah, rice. Yeah, I love jollof rice, too. It's so good. Why don't we have that in East Africa? And I know. We do not have jollof rice. We have in Jera, though. We, we have, have in Jera. We have in Jera. But no, it's, it's so addictive. Rice. The stews are also amazing. All right, I'm going to do that, too. And then they have this caramelized onion. Yasa. Yeah. Put like it on whenever. every. Thing. <laughs> like, I think they do that in Senegal a lot. Yeah, 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 right? for yeah. sure, yeah. Okay. So this place is like kind of an inspiration of all West African cuisine together, okay. and obviously there's like stronger, like some countries in some of the food, but it's yeah. mostly just trying to bring in most of the West African diaspora, I love that. which I love. You gotta have plantains. You gotta have plantains. I'll share the plantains with you. Okay. And, and then we got doing... our margaritas. We got our margaritas. Most important. You're gonna love this food. I'm very excited. You know, it, the vibe is great, right? Yes. The vibe is so fun. good. All of the art is amazing. Let's sit over here. Oh Thank you. my gosh. I am ready and I'm so excited to be with you. I know. I'm excited to be with you too. I haven't seen you in so long. It's too long. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. And you're having, what is your drink? And I'm having the ginger, ginger mezzo. Ginger mascal. Okay. Cheers. 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 Mm. Let's dig in. Let's dig in. So this is the yasa. This is Did you have it? Onion. Oh. I love that. This is my favorite. I'm obsessed. Oh, you can put it on any of the I would love to like come here and just buy this. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like tangy. There is a little bit. vinegary. A little bit, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mm. The rice is like perfect. Isn't that nice? Oh, that's good. It's almost like shiny, like a little oh, bit yeah. like yeah, a tea. Yeah, 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 a green, like a uh, uh, iced tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like with lips. No, it's so mm. good. Wow, that's really good. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I really love that. Look at that peanut sauce. Oh, I'm going to do what you just did. Right? The chicken. Ooh, that is good. It's everything. Whoa. Life is crazy. How is being a fashion designer? I mean, honestly, it's it's been like a... Such a different world from where you came from. From like the UN to this? Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. It's yeah. wild. And, but you know, like... That's a headline from the UN to fashion. fashion week. Yeah, and we just finished Fashion Week. We just started showing um, some of our partners the spring collection and summer collection that's coming out. But you were like the OG supporter for us, it's you know? know you have you. been rocking out at New York since we started. I know, I'm sorry. You know, and it's, you represent so much of what I think for me is important in fashion is community. Thank like you. you know, like it really is about that. Yeah, it is really about yeah. that, and it's and it's cool when you find people who are interested in the thing that you want to do. One hundred percent. Oh wow, like I'm really, and you've always been supportive of me. Yeah. I think that's how we met. That's how we met. Yeah, like that's how like, we met. I think I know you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think one thing I will say is that when you 
when you know the vibe is just trying to genuinely be there for you, when you know that's what the other person is bringing, yes. you can sense it. Mm -hmm. And there's really not a lot of work that needs to be done. We don't see each other that much, but that vibe brings us together. That's true. Some of the things that I think is really important is like making sure you make intentional moments with your friends. 100%. So that way you can actually really talk and dive in. 100%. You know, yeah. but if you come in, you know me, I know yep. you, you yep. can go straight to it. Yep. And then when you leave, you feel full. Yep. And you feel full for Longer. Yeah, long. I absolutely time agree. Where we might not see each other, it's still yeah. like, okay, I'm still connected. A hundred percent. So having you be such a supporter of us from the beginning, like, meant a lot. But I also expected it from you, and you expect the same from me. Yeah. No, it's true. I think you know what? It's very easy to support you though, because I feel like you have a standard of excellence. Yeah. And I think that when people are very interested in creating something and then you know that whatever they do, it's going to be the best that they can possibly do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Thank you. Yeah. So no, it's I, like the quality. I knew the quality was going to be there. I was like, I was excited. And you're wearing it and right now. It. So how and do you feel? Okay, tell me how you feel I when you're wearing, you're wearing it. Dark it. Yeah. Good. That's what we say. Right? Yeah, it's, it's an investment, it. right? It is an investment. This is not, you know, yeah. like to give you a little bit of background. First of all, you know the story. We, we, we supported garment workers. We hired them. In New that York. was in New York was during so the cool. pandemic. Pandemic, they were all gonna lose their jobs. So we knew we had a beautiful story, but like we needed a, an amazing product as well. So we looked at 17 of the top hoodies from like Gap to Dolce Gabbana to Bottega to Target, looked at like, what's the fabric? What's the seam? Combination of fabrics that make a really amazing hoodie. And out of all those 17 research and development, this came out, you know, with a regenerated polyester, with our ridged lips. And it's just yeah. really thought out. So then it's not just a hoodie anymore. Yeah. It's not just a jogger. You and it's an, it becomes an investment. Right. And no one goes into business going, I want to make the best hoodies. They start with a hoodie and then right. go into yeah. everything else. Yeah. But we came into it saying, we want the best hoodie. And that's why the market and has been good to us. And I think that's why we have this huge community that's, you know, we keep selling out of colors. I like the blue as well. A the lot. blue is? The blue is beautiful. When's your birthday? September 18th. Okay, well, think about it. <laughs> <laughs> what was your process like in your mind about leaving work? Because you were yeah, like my... chilling. I don't know if everybody understands you as a founder, like leaving your job. You were very established. Yeah, yeah. Like you've been on like multiple lists. Like yeah. you know who you are. Yeah, yeah. You know? What was your exact title? Of you so I was an officer for UNICEF. So I managed the finances uh, in our Wall Street office. And so really main focus was working with like JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs and all these financial titans on yeah. making big big projects. Yeah, and you I know? remember you would be like, you would also be taking people out, like yeah. that was part of your I mean, yeah. job. So, the world's like most interesting people, we were always working with them. And so it was, it was rewarding because yeah. there was a lot of need in the world. But I will say if there was any way for me to have gone into fashion, yeah. it was because people needed help. There was a quote my dad, who was a tailor back home, he, he used to say, always look out for people with greatness in their hands. And for him, it was tailors, it was shoe shiners, it was people who make beautiful things, essential workers, yes. before we call them essential workers. Yes. And so that's when I was like, how are garment workers like my father, how are they doing? And then I heard, and then I was like, I got you. Okay. I didn't know the promise, but I was like, I promise you won't close doors. This is so deep. I wasn't yeah. thinking about the connection. There was no other way for me to have gone into fashion wow. if it wasn't about getting people and helping people. And so it wasn't planned, Yeah. but if there was ever a way to get into fashion for me, it was because there was a need, a human need. Yeah. And um, I think that's why our story has won with people. How did it go from being like this big thriving place yeah. to like not as invested? In it? Yeah, look, I think, you know, for the promise for us was that we would do our first collection here and get them throughout. Now the orders have come, come back okay. that they're sustaining yeah. like they were. Um, and one thing I will say is that a lot of brands have a lot of investors that they have to uh, answer to. Okay. You know, we're black owned, black run, black invested, self invested. Wow. So we don't have anybody to answer to. So we can make the risk of saying, oh, we're going to make a garment district for this season or LA in this season or what have you. The bottom line becomes that it's hard to scale yeah. working out of the garment district only. Yeah. It's very hard to scale. I'm sure. Yeah. Because it's limited space. Limited space. I mean, we're in Saks Fifth Avenue. There's no way we could do Saks Fifth Avenue and two other retailers. Yeah. by producing here. Okay, got it. So what does that look like? Do you, the do you change direction with what you do? Like how does that, how so does that work? So the future for us is that 
A, we, we fulfill the promise of saving the jobs during the pandemic. Yeah. And now it's figuring out what pieces could stay here yes. and what pieces could go in other places like Portugal okay. or Honduras or Got what it. have you. And then how do we also support those communities while we're working there? It's very important to me that we're giving to the communities as well. Okay. Um, you know, we've done a lot. Just in a year, we gave 20% of December sales to refugee organizations. We um, host a lot of uh, brick and mortar stores. Okay. We we'll invite other black owned brands. Just I like we really that. try to figure it. out. We only grow together and there's like enough sun for all of us. Yeah. And we like wholeheartedly try to be very accurate about how and intentional about how we use our platform as a brand. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. Is that Business a hard decision stay. though? Because I feel like that was part of the integral like DNA of the company. Yeah, hundred percent. The passion was to save the jobs. The okay. passion was completed, you know? Okay. And now it's about scaling a business. And scaling this business will require diversifying where our manufacturing is. Yeah. And so for me, you know, I've had corporate background, I've had NGO background, and now passion. And when I meld it all together, all those bricks kind of make sense where now I can make these kinds of decisions and think of them like, okay, this is a good business decision for us. This is how you kind of scale up. Yeah. And we got to make these decisions. And our partners here also get it. Yeah. Our I factories here, they get it. They that. know they can't. Yeah. They can't produce in the masses that we need. Yeah, I, no. think, I mean, I, one of the things that I admire mm -hmm. in business people is being able to have hard conversations with people directly. Sometimes what happens is you get to a certain point and you're like, oh, my lawyer is going to handle that. Mm -hmm. so when you develop these specific relationships yep. that are actually human led, yep. 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 like how do you continue in this space? And it's like, well, you have to have a conversation. Like, yeah. this is what we're going to do. Like, we want to make sure that you're aware of where we're going with yeah. this. It yeah. doesn't mean that you're not involved anymore, but it's going to change. Yeah. And you know what? You know? I love you for that because for us, the first conversation we had was with our production after you know our first season. We were like, okay, we're we're growing, you know, and we can only do so much right. in terms of production. So diversify. Yeah. And so I think the best thing you could do, and the best thing anyone could do, is that you have to be flexible with your strategy. When I first started, I was like, okay, I'm going to help this garment district. Yeah. But then on top of that, I'm going to make every single thing, even the plastic in New York, even like the bag, even yeah. the, I was like so into it. And then I was like, oh, these are not possible. We don't yes, have production. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Wait. And you gotta, you gotta be like very, you know, generous to yourself about your strategy and be like, okay, I gotta move. I gotta move forward in this. No, there's yeah. many different ways. For know. sure. Making things happen. It's really interesting. Like the pivot of how to make it happen. Well, you pivot. You feel yeah, it? yeah. I did. I you know, did. you know, remember we met up during like the pandemic, you oh know? Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a very yeah. interesting conversation because what's funny is a couple months before everything kind of went down, yeah. I remember having a conversation with my manager and I was like, I just need like one month where I can sit down and make as many videos about makeup as yeah. I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was like, Doing with you, and I was like, I'm telling you, I really want to do this. Yeah, yeah. And she was like, Okay, and I was like, Well, where am I going to find the time? And then everything. The pandemic. Out. And I was like, Oh, I was like, I have more than a month. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that kind of just became like this yeah. world. And then similar to you, yeah. community was really important to me. So I would hop on, I would do makeup, but then I'd be able to talk to people. Yep, yep. And so like living in the pandemic, like, yeah, yeah. everyone got super lonely. I yeah. got super lonely. One hundred percent. Yeah. And so being able to have this connection, at least through words of affirmation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. Community, man. Community. That is it. And speaking of community, so Turinga is in the African Center, which yes. is the whole aspect of the African Center is about bringing people together and building a community, spreading, you know, African joy, African culture, African life uh, to the to you know all of New York and the world. So yeah. we're kind of in that. We're, we're, in we're that feeling space. it. Yeah. We're feeling it. Yeah. Yeah.